Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 5 for April the 1st, 2018. We're in Unit 2 today entitled, All Glory and Honor. And our topic uh, taken from uh, Del Quarterly today is, Guess Who? Our devotional reading comes out of uh, the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 24, uh, verses 36 through 49. Our background scripture uh, comes out of Luke chapter 24 verses 1 through 35 and we'll be studying today from Luke chapter 24 verses uh, 1 through 12 and also verses 30 through 35. Our key verse reads, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. That's taken from Luke chapter 24 verse 34. And our lesson aims today, number one, is to remember the story of the resurrection that binds us to Christ and to one another. Secondly, to value the promise that Christ is with us in the breaking of bread. And thirdly, to rejoice in the knowledge of Christ's resurrection and presence among us. We have uh, three outlines today that uh, will be a part of our discussion. Uh, the first outline is entitled a futile search uh, the second outline is entitled a divine directive forgotten and then the third outline uh, is entitled an unexpected encounter I thank and praise God today for this great opportunity and this privilege to be able to share this uh, lesson with you for Easter Sunday uh, we hope uh, trust and pray that you are uh, studying along with us and uh, even today as we share this familiar story as a reminder of what Christ has done for us uh, and how significant that is for us as believers to continue to to make sure this story is uh, is never forgotten but our biblical context for this lesson is as follows. The book of Luke is considered uh, by some to be the most comprehensive of the Gospels. He was the Gentile author of this particular Gospel, a companion of Paul as well as a physician. Luke dedicated both of his books to a man named Theophilus. His name means lover of God, who was probably a ranking Roman official. And so he made it clear in the introduction of his book that uh, his purpose for writing was to give an ordered account of the events in the life of Christ. You can look at Luke chapter 1 verses 1 through 4 uh, for reference to that. And also he provided the most complete account of Christ's birth and compared to the other gospel accounts uh, Luke emphasized the importance of Christ's resurrection to the authenticity of the gospel and Christianity uh, by reporting several of Jesus' post-resurrection appearances uh, to his disciples and uh, to others. And so as we get into this lesson today, uh, I was reminded um, uh, of what Luke was trying to do uh, as he wrote uh, but I, I wanted to share at least two words that uh, I want you to take a look at uh, at your leisure and we'll give you some biblical reference. The one is fulfillment. Uh, and I want you to look at Matthew chapter 1 verses 20 through 22. Also uh, John chapter 5 uh, verses 39 through 47. We may have a little time to read some of that. And also the second word I want you to pay attention to is the resurrection of Jesus and we also will be sharing some scripture reference with you about that uh, but as we uh, uh, shared uh, in our biblical context uh, that Luke uh, did a very comprehensive investigation uh, and it's very important for us to understand that uh, uh, Jesus resurrection was a divine act 
uh, involving all three persons of the Godhead. I want you to look at John chapter 10 verses 17 and verse 18. Also Acts chapter 13 uh, verses 30 through 35 and also Romans chapter 1 uh, verse 4. So this resurrection uh, it was not uh, just a revival of the broken physical body that was taken down uh, from the cross uh, and buried. It was a transformation of Jesus' humanity that enabled him to appear and to vanish and move unseen from uh, one location to another. And uh, that reference is Luke chapter 24, verse 31 through 36. But what's uh, critical for us to understand about this is that our Christianity rests on the certainty of Jesus' resurrection as occurred in history. Uh, so all the Gospels have it as their goal with the empty tomb and resurrection appearances um, as we find even in the book of Acts. So uh, Paul uh, regarded the resurrection as an indisputable proof that the message about Jesus uh, as judge and savior is true. So uh, our Christianity rests on the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, uh, without that uh, resurrection we would be hopeless in the world. Uh, we would be fearing death and we would be fearing that uh, that 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 when you're dead you're done and and if you, if you will and and uh, uh, we would not be able to really live uh, 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 any praiseworthy type of life without the hope uh, and the accuracy and the authenticity of Jesus' resurrection. I want to keep that in mind. Uh, it, you know the the the, the doctrine uh, uh, resurrection is a doctrine in and of itself. And you cannot become a Christian without believing uh, or confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. You can see that in Romans chapter 10. So I want to keep those things in mind. And we ought to be encouraged uh, by the fact that uh, uh, death uh, could not hold Jesus in the grave. Um, he defeated Death. Uh, you can see all of that uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and its entirety. But we want to begin today with the first outline entitled A Feudal Search. This is taken from Luke chapter 24 verses 1 through 8. The Bible says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, uh, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus and it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout behold two men stood by them in shining garments verse 5 as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth they said unto them why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men uh, and be crucified in the third day, um, rise again. And they remembered his words. But when we shared early on about the word fulfillment and we gave you some scripture reference for uh, that particular word, it, it's important to understand that Jesus' life, his appearance, uh, uh, his initial birth, uh, his life, his death, all of these things are biblically sound. Uh, all of these things represent a fulfillment of the Old Testament. Uh, if you, when you, when you get to the New Testament, uh, even if we started in the book of Matthew and moved through through the Gospels, 
uh, we can see Christ on the scene. And Christ is on the scene because the time, the fullness of times have come. And, and Christ has appeared according to what the prophets uh, uh, in the Old Testament said would occur. Uh, what I love about God, he forecasts everything that we should expect. Uh, and so when you look, uh, even in Luke chapter 2, we find Anna and Simeon, the prophetess, uh, they were in the temple. Uh, the Bible says they were waiting on the consolation of Israel. Why were they there waiting? They were waiting because of what they had heard uh, and what they had learned uh, through Old Testament passages and Simeon had been told by the Holy Ghost that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Christ and so uh, what I'm sharing with you today is that as we read this story I want you to think about the fulfillment uh, uh, of, of what God has said concerning his son so as we get into this narrative uh, uh, about uh, those going to the tomb and 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 the tomb being uh, empty and the body of the Lord Jesus is not there he is risen the angels is letting them know uh, 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 because he couldn't be there he could not be there because the Bible said the Old Testament uh, passages uh, have reached a fulfilling or fulfillment where Christ has risen just as he said he would so what Jesus did, he was prophesying and, and telling his own disciples of the future, of what to expect. Even in this text, he told them where he would be, where to meet him after his resurrection. But they, they were not there. And so verse 7, as we read uh, concerning what Jesus had uh, said about this uh, uh, saying the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men uh, and be crucified and the third day rise again and then uh, uh, verse 8 says and they remembered his word so it's very important for us to understand that uh, whatever God has said it has to reach uh, uh, its fulfillment but I want you to turn with me uh, very quickly to Luke chapter uh, 24. Uh, this is not a part of our text that we are studying today, but I think it is very relevant to what we are sharing with you today. Luke 24, and I want you to go down to verse 25, and then we'll read that down to verse 27 but the Bible says uh, this is Jesus talking then he said to them "O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken verse 26 ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory verse 27 and beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded uh, to them in all the scriptures of the things concerning himself. So as Jesus is talking uh, with these uh, disciples on the uh, road to Emmaus, notice here how he goes back and gets uh, 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 from the beginning, uh, he starts with Moses and all the prophets. Why is Jesus sharing scripture from the Old Testament? Sometimes we uh, have some issues in uh, 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 understanding uh, the Bible but but Jesus is going back to help these disciples understand that in order for you to understand what is happening now you need to go back and look at what was said uh, what was prophesied that has now reached a fulfillment and that's very important so Jesus begins to explain uh, uh, and then he calls them foolish and they are slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. We have to learn how to believe the word that God is sharing with us. Uh, and what the whole testament does for us, it sets the stage of what we should expect God to do uh, uh, in the future. So now that Christ has come, 
uh, it, it's not a coincidence that he has appeared or that he has died or that he has uh, 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 resurrected. It, it, it's, the, it's the appearance uh, and it should encourage our hearts today that, 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 that we uh, see God fulfilling what he has spoken. That's very important for us to understand. So this is why Jesus is going back and getting what has been said to encourage the disciples now if you're going to go forward uh, 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 these disciples would have to believe everything that God has said concerning uh, his son and that's very important for us today I hope that you can uh, grasp uh, this in a way that will help encourage you because I know that uh, what the Holy Spirit will do for us he will tell us things that are to come you can see that in uh, uh, John chapter 16 so it's important for us to stay in the readiness stay in the mindset of expecting God to do that which he said he would do so the angels message prompted their remembrance of Jesus prophetic words concerning his resurrection so uh, lest we criticize these women uh, for their bad memories consider how often we have forgotten or fail to trust God's word. Uh, there's a remedy for this kind of spiritual amnesia, uh, the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We know we have a living Savior, but we often fail to respond to his living word and in futility search for unfulfilling solutions to challenges he has already overcome. Isn't that beautiful? Sometimes that happened to us uh, happens to us as Christians we uh, uh, search we uh, 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 are not successful in futility coming to nothing we search for unfulfilling solutions to challenges uh, he has already overcome um, I want you to look at and we may go over there very quickly uh, to Matthew uh, chapter 5 I want to share this with you, but we want to be encouraged by this today. Um, this is very familiar to, to us, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. This is Jesus talking. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass until pass from the law until till all is fulfilled. You see that? And so everything to the smallest detail, everything, if if God has not done uh, 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 things that he said he uh, was going to do that means he is going to do those things those things will not be forgotten uh, God won't miss any details he won't miss anything and, 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 I, and I'm encouraging myself uh, with this because we have to remember in life's challenges and crisis we have to uh, uh, somehow remember uh, prayerfully with the help of the Holy Spirit what God has said about a particular matter or situation uh, even as our world is chaotic we have to remember what Jesus told us did he tell us the world would be chaotic yes he did so that should not be a surprise to to us did he tell you that he would never leave you or forsake you uh, yes he did and so we have to remember that no matter what God is not going to leave you and he's never going to forsake you because that's what he said. And we have to remember that today. So the question is asked in the quarterly, the enemies of Christ recalled his resurrection predictions more than his disciples. Why do you think this was so? So we could debate about uh, why uh, uh, sometimes uh, others believe uh, and remember things that the Christians uh, uh, should uh, be able to recall to mind uh, but but we want to be able to make sure that we are always hopeful 
and that we stay in a spirit of expecting God to do. Uh, sometimes we, we are trying to live without any hope and without any expectation. Uh, and so uh, that is not the way uh, 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 to live. You remember Thomas, uh, uh, doubting Thomas, he said he would not believe if he had not seen Christ, uh, felt his hands or put his hand in his side that he wouldn't believe. Uh, but you remember Jesus appeared and he went to Thomas and he allowed Thomas to fulfill those things that he spoke out concerning what he needed to do uh, in order to believe. But I remember Jesus telling him, don't go on. Don't continue to live, in other words, unbelieving, but be believing. Uh, uh, we won't be able to see everything that happened in Scripture. Uh, we were not there, but we ought to be like Anna the prophetess and Simeon in Luke chapter 2. Uh, we ought to be waiting, expecting uh, the consolation of God uh, to come into our lives. So our second outline is entitled, A Divine Directive Forgotten. Uh, this comes out of Luke chapter 24, verses 9 through 12. The Bible says, And returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things to the eleven, and, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, uh, and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. You see, that, that was the problem. They didn't believe. But verse 12 said, Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulcher, and stooping down, and beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself in that which was come to pass. And so this is the issue uh, uh, for us as believers. What do we uh, believe? Isaiah asked the question, I believe Isaiah 53, 1 said, Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And so these women are reporting what they have found, uh, that Jesus' body is not there. And they tell the apostles uh, who should have known because they were with Jesus uh, during his ministry. And he talked to them about all of these things that he would be crucified. But now the crisis of crucifixion has set in. The fear, the doubt has set in. Uh, perhaps this is not true. Uh, you had to know uh, and have to know that the disciples were scared. They were afraid. Uh, they didn't want anything to happen to them. So they're all uh, uh, sort of gathered together uh, uh, and not believing the things uh, at this time. They couldn't even recall the fear and the doubt had set in in such a way. They couldn't recall anything uh, that Jesus had said to them. They didn't remember and sometimes that happens. Sometimes when the when the battle is hot, when the crisis is deep, and the uh, the waters of, of of trial and tribulation are, are are rising above our heads, it's difficult and challenging sometimes for us to believe. So I understand where the disciples are. I'm not criticizing them, uh, uh, but I'm sharing with you today is that these things happen to us. And so this is one of the reasons why uh, when we get into the book of Acts, why Jesus appeared uh, 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 to his disciples. He wanted them to know, wanted them to be encouraged uh, 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 about this resurrection. And so uh, Jesus had many uh, post-resurrection appearances. So so we need to be encouraged sometimes and, and God will do that for you. He will reveal to you and encourage you that he has not forsaken you and that's what Jesus did uh, with his own. Uh, but the commentary says the women immediately responded to the angel's message um, by leaving the tomb to report to the eleven disciples and others 
uh, and the, uh, the other followers what they had seen and heard. And so the women who were the recipients of the angel's message are identified in verse 10. The message given to the disciples by the women was met with disbelief and they were considered delirious, hysterical, and guilty of, of spreading idle tales. In spite of the unbelief exhibited by the disciples, Peter ran to the tomb, looked in, saw the evidence, but returned home more bewildered than convinced. And so sometimes that that happens. Uh, but the community of faith elaborately celebrates Jesus' resurrection on Easter Sunday. However, the failure to rely on his promises to do the extraordinary as witnesses to a disbelieving world is a reality check on our spiritual memories and level of trust in him. Uh, so the resurrection of Christ is at the heart of our Christian faith. And what we want to share with you today, if Jesus, if God raised Jesus from the dead, what more can he do? Talking about the extraordinary, if God raised Jesus from the dead, I want to turn very quickly to Luke. 137 and this is something that you need to keep in your arsenal uh, as you deal with and as I deal with things that we need to happen in our lives extraordinary things things that are beyond us beyond our ability beyond our comprehension uh, beyond our strength beyond our understanding uh, this is not a place where we should give up but Luke 137 says for with God nothing will be impossible with God nothing will be impossible and so we want to remember that today uh, as we see this story and as we uh, encounter challenges in our lives that 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 push our faith and that stretch our trust in God we have to continue to rely upon him uh, but the question is asked why did the disciples forget Christ clear directive to meet him in Galilee after his resurrection. Let's talk about just for a second uh, distractions in the in this life. Uh, we 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 as a people are full of uh, uh, we, we're in a world that's full of distractions that cloud our judgment. It clouds our focus and sometimes we respond more uh, uh, readily to the trial or the circumstance around us than we do to the Word of God. But that is the challenge today. The world is going to get more chaotic. Uh, the world is going to offer more distractions for us. Uh, there are going to be more things that come up to keep us uh, uh, out of kilter, if you will. But the challenge for us today is to remember Keep feeding yourself with what the Lord said he would do. Keep worshiping God. Keep praising God. Uh, let us not be so distracted by everything that comes along. But the challenge for the church today at large is to keep its focus. To remember the promises. We have a lot of things that we have to decipher as Christians. There are a lot of even doctrines uh, uh, on the scene today so many people are uh, speaking and preaching and but we have to remember what did Jesus tell us what did he tell us to do what did he say would occur uh, that is our challenge today to remember these things I also want you to look at at your leisure uh, Luke chapter uh, 24 we won't have time to get there today. Luke 24 verses 44 through 45. And also uh, Philippians chapter 3 uh, verses 7 through 11. Our last outline is entitled An Unexpected Encounter. This is taken from Luke chapter 24 uh, verses 30 through 35. And the Bible says, And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to them and their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight and they said to one another did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures 
Verse 33, And they rose up the same hour, and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together, and them, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. How do you know Jesus rose from the dead? How do you know that? What gives you the greatest encouragement and hope concerning his resurrection? One of the things that I've shared over the years uh, that the Spirit of the Lord is bringing to me even now is that the Bible as you read the Old Testament to the New Testament and you believe what you read your faith should lead you to experience with God. Uh, your faith should lead you to the power of the Holy Ghost. Do you remember where Jesus told his disciples to go and to tarry in the upper room uh, and wait for the promise of his Father? They followed his teachings. They followed his instructions. They went to the place that he told them to go and they stayed there and they waited and they received what he said would come. My point is if you move in faith to the place that the Lord told you to go you would receive what the Lord said you would receive. The promise is for you it is for your children and all to all of those who are afar off. But we have to follow, move in faith if we want to receive. And so uh, I, I heard the saints say this years ago. They said, I know my Redeemer liveth because he liveth in me. Your faith should lead you to experience. And that experience... It's nothing but the fruit of the Holy Spirit that is uh, called for in Galatians chapter 5. You will get the fruit out of the instruction. You will get the fruit out of the teachings of Jesus Christ. You will get the experience. You will get the joy that you are looking for. You will get the hope. And when something is in you and you know it's in you and it's working, that should give you confidence. Paul says these words in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. He says, I am confident, I'm sure that he that began a good work in you, in me, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost, the experience that you now have resting in you is going to continue in you until the day of Jesus Christ. I hope this is encouraging to you today. I hope you understand it. And let us continue to celebrate this Easter Sunday knowing in our hearts and minds that he is risen. Our closing prayer, Lord, help us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of your word so that we can be effective witnesses of our risen Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. and We pray that this lesson has, uh, will bless you today as it has been a blessing to me. And until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.